It always says that we cannot process a large quantity of data with Python as fast as C unless we use NumPy array. However, we still cannot can maintain all algorithms by using array. So we have to con consider contiguous buffer as an interface and use it to let the, the data be shared efficiently between C++ and code and Python programs. Today, the speaker will show how to design a simple array system in C++ and make it available in Python. Let's give your hand and welcome Yong Yu Chen. Hello everyone, I'm Yong Yu. Okay, I'm seeing the slide. Uh, today I'm going to talk about making simple array in C++ and uh, connect it to Python to make the two world in harmony and uh, to make your program to run fast. Um, so this is, could be a rather exotic talk in a PyCon. Um, so here I want to set the tone that the whole notion of making an array library and to write code in C++ and connect it back to Python is because that we want to run very fast. So uh, last time I visited Japan for vacation that I saw the advertisement of the dual Shinkansen that's going to be running like in this decade and next decade there will be like 500 kilometers per, per hour that is pretty fast, right? So that will bring down the distance. Well, not really distance, but the time distance between the Eastern and Western Japan. So people are keep trying to run faster and faster and faster. And the reason is that we simply want to shorten the time so that uh, you must be already seeing all those uh, famous uh, uh, movie quote that uh, as long as you are fast, that no one can defeat you. That is pretty much true uh, in, the, in the world of programming and the software uh, development. So that is why we need to make things faster and the measure is to use array. This is a construct that uh, to be the fundamentals of high performance computing. Uh, the data structure I well, array is a data structure, but it is a data structure that is so simple that uh, uh, sometimes probably we don't even should call it a data structure because all it takes is a regular um, ordering of data in memory. But uh, this data structure is the foundation for all kinds of speed up techniques that we are going to employ in our programming, including catch, including parallelism, uh, single instruction model data or vector processing, and GPU and so on and so forth. Almost everything we want to speed up is built upon these array data structure. So uh, it is actually how our processors are designed. See, this guy actually is sitting inside my laptop right now. It is the circuit that is moving forward and driving all the calculation. And uh, those circuits are actually regular lines and space on the silicon. They're so regular so that if we want to make the program run fast on the chip, we should make our data line up regularly. There are basically two kinds of ways to access and manipulate the data with those kind of regular circuit. One is that we simply uh, regularly access the data here so that our algorithm just processes all those data in batch. Another way to do it, which also uses the array, is to process the data with random access. It's a little bit more complicated and reduce the runtime a little bit, but it's still fairly fast. So speaking of arrays, that the simplest array is the one-dimensional contiguous memory buffer. It is actually how arrays are stored. All kinds of arrays are stored in this way, in the real memory. 
um, well, we are not talking about how those uh, cell bits are actually lined up in your memory module, but in our programming model, our uh, memory, our, our data are contiguous memory buffers as in one the array. Uh, and uh, for different purposes, we may have two dimensional arrays. We may have three dimensional arrays. We may have multi dimensional arrays that will have a different way of arranging or interpreting those contiguous memory buffers. So, on top of that, we are going to write C and C, primarily C. With a little bit of Python, and you see this guy here, right? Zoom in. Okay, there's Python. So, don't walk away. <laughs> we will still talk about Python uh, throughout this talk. But before going to Python, I need to justify why we ever want to write C++ and, uh, well, write C++ code to build our own array. The reason is not really C++. Nobody likes to write C++, right? Who likes to write C++? I'm not, I'm not going to raise my head. Nobody likes to write C++, or even C. Well, but I think C still gets some popularity, right? Who likes writing C? Right? Yeah, there are some normal people here <laughs> like to write C. So C is a decent language, but C++ is not. We write C++ because we have to. Uh, to be honest, that C can do the same thing, but C++ offers a lot of facility that you can organize a larger chunk of software pieces. The key is that we can turn the C++ code into assembly. Well, you all of course, you can turn Python code into assembly, but that's not really how Python works. But in C++, we use the compiler to turn things into assembly, and we actually inspect, or even sometimes we hard code the assembly because we can use those instructions to drive the circuit directly. Okay. Um, so to make that happen, we need to develop software in C++. So there are two major components. One is the memory buffer management. The other is the memory or the data access. So <clears throat> simple array is, well, it is a simple kind of teaching code uh, to tell you how to manipulate and uh, uh, doing computing with arrays. Uh, it is implemented as a C++ class template holds a contiguous memory buffer, and provide interfaces, a very, very efficient interface to multi-dimensional memory access to its elements. So I decided to you manipulate the fundamental types, those types that actually your processor understands. Uh, it is possible to use to, for some struct, but I actually didn't test it. Uh, so the uh, operation, uh, will be something for this uh, contiguous buffer, line out in uh, one dimension, or it can be two-dimensional higher dimension array data like this. There's a difference between the array and uh, our very good friend of vector. So the major difference is that the uh, array is supposed to, f to use fixed size of memory. You may reallocate that array, but then you know it is a different array. Vector is not like this. In a vector, you can vary the size of the container and add the reallocation automatically behind the thing. So you may or may not know when it reallocate. But that is not a very good thing when you want to write fast processing code with a memory buffer, so array is supposed to have a fixed size. And in C++, um, not until recently that we have the multi-dimensional accessor of the bracket operator. Well, right now we have in C++ 23, um, but in the past that we can only uh, overload this operator for multi-dimensional access. Now uh, that is a conven uh, conventional uh, function call operator. Um, and in in uh, standard vector, uh, we don't overload operators, so we still use the standard element access bracket operator. 
And this simple array will have functionalities uh, that I'm going to introduce later. But before that, I want to emphasize that, uh, well, for education and training process, uh, purposes, that it is a head-only C++ library. Okay. It may or may not be a head-only library, but because it's a class template, so it can interpret those uh, element type, type when you are compiling, so it should be a template library. Okay. Uh, so that makes it a perfect candidate to be head-only. So the memory location will be used fixed size, and uh, we will separate the buffer management from how we interpret the metadata. The metadata will include the type information, which should be available during compile time, not runtime. Okay. Uh, by the way, NumPy actually do the same thing, but it is implemented in C. Then in addition to type information, we have shape and stride information, which will be used during runtime. And we, uh, I also introduce as an example to show you how to customize this array library for some application specific uh, behavior. Okay, here we go with the buffer management first. Um, <clears throat> the key is that, uh, well, in C++ programming, constructor and con destructor are key component, probably the most important components. So we dictate that uh, only the constructors allocate memory. And we do not allocate memory except in this structure. So we have this constraint or assumption to help us to manage the life cycle of the memory. Well, if we, we don't manage it in a correct way, bad thing can happen that it can go like a, a segmentation fault or just access the memory that you shouldn't have. The management is implemented in a standalone class. It is another template, it is a standalone class called concrete buffer. Uh, so from the name, you infer that uh, it is holding the memory. So this concrete buffer uh, actually uses two small pointers. Well, it is probably not the best way to implement that, but uh, uh, it is a very good demonstration uh, uh, to show what are the differences between a share pointer and a, a unique pointer. So from the outside, uh, we use a share pointer to hold uh, the life cycle of this concrete buffer because the buffer may be shared by many other consumers, by many different arrays. And uh, we turn off the move semantics so that it is, uh, do, I, do I have only five minutes left? I have 10 minutes left, 15 minutes. Okay, that's good, thanks. So the move to net is turned off so that the pointer will not go away unless this buffer object is destructed. Okay. And uh, the second step or the interior is that, uh, oh, here. Inside uh, the object, I allocate the memory and keep it in a unique pointer. So because this buffer is shared among many objects. So we actually know that uh, we can manage the life cycle within the buffer objects. Okay. And uh, we will use the deleter interface so that we can customize the memory lifecycle management. Okay. So this deleter is a proxy to the concrete buffer and we create a remover object as an implementation inside the deleter. Okay, this code could be a little bit complicated, but this structure is important because we, move, we make the remover as a polymorphic function type so that we can override it from other, other location, even outside this temporary library. And uh, this temporary library does not need to know uh, beforehand what the remover is so that it allows us to, you, uh, to have a different uh, competition unit to manage the memory life cycle of this buffer, okay? This is, a, this is very important when you are building a rather larger piece of software because you have uh, multiple competition unit or shared object or even binaries. They want to access the same thing and control the life cycle. You need to have interface for that. Oh, none of that happens in Python, 
Okay, it ha all happens in the assembly world. Uh, so after we handle this lifecycle management or memory management, we access the data. So we keep the type information in compile time. Of course, you can pull that information during runtime, but for compiler to get you the best instructions, it needs to understand what is the type. So it is embedded. Then we define the shape and stride information. It is how we interpret the uh, access or the movement of your indices in that array. It is trivial when you have 1D array, but it will be pretty interesting you have like 10 dimension in your arrays. Um, and there are some optimization uh, in the code, so that for lower dimension, like two or three, uh, it should uh, be straightforward to happen. Okay. okay, so for higher dimension, which is not so straightforward, the code is using the variety template to do the calculation in recursively. But if the recursion happened during runtime, it will be horrible in runtime in the performance, right? So that recursion use variety template, it is happening during compile time. So during runtime, it is directly used uh, already instantiated functions for the iteration. Okay, so those are the standard things. But there are also some non-standard things. That is uh, actually the, the, the talent for you to make your own array library. You can add whatever you want. Okay, not just use the API of it. And after all, what we want is a, a memory manager as well as how we interpret those data. So like here, normally when you are accessing an array that uh, you use zero and the natural number to access the element. But in some applications like uh, I'm also doing fluid dynamics, then we have so-called the ghost elements, which are not interior in my computing domain. It is outside my computing domain. Uh, so they are not so real. Uh, we tend to use negative index to interpret uh, to, to represent them. So that uh, we allow the negative index in the array and uh, try to make it available with our additional cost. So we keep those ghost um, shape and in uh, and strides inside our uh, simple array and do and less information are calculated doing compiled uh, sorry doing construction so after the array object is constructed all the metadata are there the access will be using the same runtime as a normal array so we are not incurring any runtime overhead for the ghost indices um, the trick is actually we limit the ghost information in the first dimension or the zeroth dimension because the calculation may or may not be trivial if we are using the higher dimension. Okay? But and that's exactly what we need uh, for, for fluid dynamics. Okay, so that is look and feel of the simple array. Then there are some tricks played during the implementation. One of the major well, tricks is uh, small vector optimization or small strings, whatever you use it for. This thing means that uh, we know that for our dimensionality of our shape and stride, we usually do not have a lot of elements in that uh, container. Like uh, a lot of time we have like one dimension or two dimension in the array. We don't have like 10 dimension all the days. So we don't need to allocate so much memory for uh, those shape and stride uh, metadata. Instead, we know we probably only have three or four elements in them. Why don't we just create a class that is working like a vector, a 1D array, but pre-allocate the data in it? Okay, that is a small vector. So a small vector, not simple vector, okay? This guy, our small vector, that it actually have a pointer just like a vector, but it has internal memory buffer of very small size. And our uh, data pointer directly point to our internal buffer. When it grows outside the scope of the internal small buffer, then it will reallocate for another buffer. Okay, that's a small, small memory. 
uh, sorry, a small vector. And for the standard vector, actually, you always need uh, to have a pointer, but no internal buffer. Pointing to empty when it is constructed and point to another buffer allocated uh, when, you have mem uh, when you have element pushed back in the vector. So this is not only useful for us to save memory size uh, for the array. It is also very useful when you want faster runtime. Okay. So <clears throat> again, another example that you need to manipulate your constructor and destructor for this small vector. Okay. The code could be tricky. Uh, and that is all the essence that when you need to manipulate the small pointers inside this class template. And um, we create a simple array in C++, but we will operate it from Python. We populate the data and the best interface for populating and manipulate arrays actually is NumPy. So NumPy is designed for dense array and so is simple array. Okay. This is how we use NumPy. So I'm going to skip it because I'm supposed that you are all expert on that. And I'm going to tell you that why we want to have that complicated C++ and Python interface because Python is very slow. Okay. This is a simple equation and uh, we have a simple algorithm here to do the time marching for the solution of the left hand side. The above is the NumPy speed. It looks okay, right? 0 0.05 or 0 0.0, yeah, 55 seconds. But you see the Python version in the below is actually 80 times, sorry, 87 times slower. Or you can say that uh, NumPy is speeding up by 87 times. But that is, that is good, right? But that is not enough. If we have the array in C++ and we interface that to Python, do the calculation in C++, share the buffer, it is way faster. It is another 2x. So in summary, in Python, well, the code looks nice, but it's like 4.7 seconds in runtime. In NumPy, it is like a less than 100 times faster, but in C++, it is almost 200x speed up. When you are doing calculation on, say, like uh, 10,000 computers, this means a lot, a lot of money, okay? So that is why we want speed, because the faster time, the lower cost, a lot of lower cost. <clears throat> and I want to remind us that uh, we were talking about arrays, but in Python, people are actually used to uh, list and other containers. That conversion between the native Python types and C++ are not really conversions, they are data copy, and you need to iterate through them, okay? So, thank you. So that is not uh, very efficient. So that is why we want to use array and uh, to achieve the zero copy. There are actually two ways to build the system. A good way is what I'm talking about today. We build everything in C++, do all the management as much as possible and expose it to Python. The other way is that you write a Python code and have C or C++ extension to process that. That's okay, but that does not give you a very good management of your system. It will bite you very soon. So the code is the library also have that kind of facility uh, to do the uh, interpretation or um, life cycle transfer between Python and C++, okay? Uh, in, and it should be bi-directional. There can be more complicated arrangement, but basically you need to make your C++ or shared array, uh, sorry, simple array to understand NumPy and vice versa. All right, so this is a rather quick introduction to how we do HPC and how we build a software structure for it. The key takeaway that I hope we have is that uh, when you need speed, 
think about arrays. Of course, you may need other data structure, but you will need array in some form of constructs. The second is that you want speed. Even if you don't think you want speed, think about after you scale and you speed up, how much money you are going to save. That's a lot of things. So because you want to run fast, because you got ways to run fast, so don't be afraid of C++, okay? It should be your friend because you are not going through Python array. Python will always be there, like here, right? So I actually dim out all those C++ because that's not so important. Python is so important here, so it's still colorful. It is the user interface or what you call the developer interface for your system and your program, okay? So I hope that you enjoy to be fast. And if you want to have something faster or more things to be faster, uh, I'm more than happy to talk to you to see how we can work together to make your code to be very good. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank, thanks for your, your session. And now it's the QA time, we have five minutes. You can, you can, you can type your question on Slido, or I, I will later, uh, later pick up someone in the uh, in audience. And now it's a question. Since there are a lot of C++ code, why still keep Python? One who is able to write such module does not really need Python and can write a whole program in C++. Uh, so the the one who asked that question seems to be very into C++ and really want to meet you. It seems that uh, you, I probably didn't see you raise a hand uh, when I asked the question who likes to write C++ and you seems to like write C++. So the reason that uh, we still want Python and we demand to have Python in the system is that I actually don't want to write C++. So I limit C++ to the places that I have to use it, okay? That is the performance part. So the rest of the system, I actually use as Python to make it readable and maintainable and usable, actually, and increase the usability of the whole system without sacrificing any runtime. I'm still very memory and, memory and uh, uh, runtime efficient, even though I have a lot of Python because they are not the runtime hotspots. It doesn't really matter what language I'm using it. So I choose Python. Yeah, does that answer the question? Yeah, if not, uh, we can follow up later. Okay, next question. Any suggest, suggested document for the binding between Python and C++? All right, um, I will recommend you to take a look at PyPy11. That is a very good library, actually a very, very good C++ library if you want to learn C++ programming. It is nicely written and you actually don't need document to understand the code. The code is very good C++. Okay. Uh, and they also have a good documentation for itself. So uh, I recommend you to just Google PyPy or PyPy11. Uh, that's a good starting point. Okay. Um, someone asked, NumPy, NumPy is also implemented by C. Why is it still slower than simple array? Uh, that's a great question. <clears throat> Yeah, NumPy, NumPy is actually as fast as the code I wrote for simple array. Okay, NumPy is actually faster, or if not, uh, if, uh, roughly the same speed. But you see the two acts in runtime, right? So in the example that I keep the code simple, so it is not so some fancy uh, fine-tuned uh, performance code. Um, that is actually what the most, what most people are writing. Right. Um, and the reason you see the runtime difference is that I still have the 
uh, management or the array constructor code in Python. I have to do it to keep the code concise. Okay. Uh, I can write more convoluted code, but that will be making the software to be even harder to maintain. Okay. So to have a comparable uh, code snippet, I choose the right, uh, rather concise way to do it, but that has overhead. And if you want to remove the overheads, actually uh, the code will be like uh, 10, 10 lines or maybe 20 lines for that thing. Okay. Um, then it should be able to be like 10% or 20% slower than C++. But then it doesn't add up. Uh, it, it doesn't really, it's not really useful anymore. Because the C or C++ version is actually much more, much easier to read and write. And it actually gives faster speed. Okay, the last question, I want to pick someone in the, in the audience. Is, any, is anyone here have a question to ask the speaker? Only one, ch only one chance? If not, we, we, have, we will end this session. And next is our job fair. And, okay, so thank everyone at, and thank our speaker. Please give him a big hand. Thank you. Okay. 好，我们谢谢讲者。那接下来会是 job fair， job fair， 我们的 job fair 会有个会有热情的赞助商、赞助伙伴呢，会上台轮流介绍自己的企业文化以及职缺需求。那我们就稍待片刻。接下来的时间，我们会欢迎也欢迎阿林会场，欢迎自由进出。那我们就稍待片刻。